I am uh, joined here this morning, uh, really great and honoured to have him here because uh, it was a bit of a last minute interview, but I came hey, across, fans, I came it's across roaming that uh, interview uh, on SBS just only yesterday afternoon. So good morning, Ian Westmoreland, founder of Mentoring Men. Good morning, mate. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Troy. I, I didn't know what live radio was until about nine o'clock last night, but uh, <laughs> it looks great. Love the music. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I always try and play some music that hopefully makes people feel uh, both awake and alert at 7.30 in the morning. It's it's not always the easiest thing to have your face sprawled across a radio station this early. I appreciate you joining us. Um, that particular clip, I mean, that's some, some pretty deep stuff. Um, tell us a little bit more. I really want to get to that. I can't help but be uh, alerted to this moment that you had when you flicked in a career. Um, most people dream of doing that but can't do it. It's pretty risky. Um, what, what were you up to before that, that pinnacle moment? Um, well, for most of my work in life, I was aimed at getting up the corporate ladder. Uh, we was initially struggled a bit for money. We had uh, uh, four kids. Mm. And I worked my way into a, a fairly senior position as an IT manager, making good money and delivering software changes. But throughout 2013, I started to think, there's more to life than just making money and delivering software changes. Mm. And I, I was looking for more uh, value in what I was doing from a community perspective. And then on the, the 10th of September, 2013, I got on the train, uh, continued to read a book I was reading, turned the page and the words just resonated. Um, and the, what I read was, uh, and it was, I guess, questioning the meaning of life and particular my mm. life. And I, I read, uh, we feel like we're doing our part as long, I'm actually reading from the book, as long as we live decent lives, mm. sort of tick, uh, stay out of trouble, sort of tick, uh, pay taxes, have babies or four, mm. make a living, uh, buy a boat. We even had a boat. <laughs> then it said, hit age 59 and a half, collect retirement, die. Um, I said that was the 10th of September, 2013. I was born on the 10th of March, 1954. I was 59 and a half the day that I read that. And I've shared that many times and some people say coincidence. I guess I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for purpose. And um, a couple of uh, days later, I actually was at the local McDonald's with my wife and, and met someone who I'd never met before. And this is an inspirational woman. And as a result of that, she actually mentioned mentoring uh, and so a few months later, I, I quit my job. I've been a volunteer since 2014. And uh, I started with the Raise Foundation, awesome organization where we, uh, I was mentoring uh, 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 young, uh, young students at uh, different high schools. Mm. And then in addition to that, I started mentoring through Kids Hope, which is another program in, into primary schools. And then in addition to that, I started I've been a facilitator for a coach mentoring program, which is into the family environment. So it's a, a, a total change from a, a money focus to a zero, yeah. zero money focus. But uh, one of the most uh, fulfilling things that I've done, it's, it's, uh, it's been a real right. The last uh, uh, seven or eight years, it's just been an incredible fulfilling journey with, with challenges along the way, but it's, it's, it's been, it's been great. Did you find that you were naturally uh, good at mentoring? Uh, some people aren't great at it, and I'll just be really, you know, realistic as well. Some people want to be mentors, but there's some things that about mentoring that you can't just uh, be good at. You've got to um, either learn them, or you might actually be good at it. Um, you mentioned a little bit in the um, the uh, press that we just ran there. A lot of it's about listening. Were you, do you think listening is one of the main components that you find men? Uh, need a absolutely so yeah. i probably should clarify so mentoring is such a broad term yeah for many people mentoring is in a business context let's say it's you mentoring me you explaining to me how to run a live talent. radio <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you've got this talent you've got this skill and it's passing on skill and that's often a traditional thing with our mentoring it's not that it's exactly what you said troy it's the vast majority is listening and we've got a we've got a fantastic uh, a training course that we ask our mentors to do and we one of the first things we need to do is detrain men because we seem to have this natural inclination oh there's a problem we've got to fix that problem yeah. and, and and it's not about that it is the vast majority exactly what you said it, it's listen 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 and the, the training course covers things covers things like that 
Uh, you, you're touching to the heart right now. I've, I've inherited a seven-year-old son from my um, just recent marriage, and we talked a lot about we talk about these things. You know, what's what's what to how do men operate even at a seven-year-old level? And and my way of teaching him, we always want to fix things. Yeah. It's really hard. It's really hard as a man, even not as the mentor, but the mentee. Like you might want to fix yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What I find, because uh, uh, obviously I'm a dad and I'm a, yes. a, a grandfather and, and, and a husband, a, a brother, there's a whole bunch of different roles. And because of the training that I've been to, and I've, I, I attended our training course probably the first 15 times it ran. Yeah. I find that I'm in a conversation, just like, say, the conversation now, then all of a sudden you'll say something. And I think, man, whoa, stop. Your mentoring hat. Put the mentoring hat on. There's something there that yeah. needs to be carefully heard and, and, and you know um, responded to, and it may be it may be asking a couple more questions around that, but just giving my the, the full space to the person I'm talking to. So that's so, and sometimes that I guess could happen in a parent in a yes. parent model. It's it's a lot harder I think to parent than it is to mentor. Yeah, like, right. I, if my son said to me, "Dad, look, I'm thinking of taking heroin or something like that." Mm. What, what do you think? What are you doing? But yeah. and it's really hard because of the the history, how you react. But if a young, we call them mentees, the guy being mentored, was to say something like that to me, it would be okay. Well, let's maybe look at that. What do you think of the the benefits of doing that? What are the disadvantages? Well, do you know what I mean? It's a lot. I think yeah. it's an easier, calmer conversation where you're not so where you, you're not emotionally engaged in it. Oh yeah, you. Yeah, it's so true, so true. Hey, I'm 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 writing notes down here, but we've got to try and we've got to try and uh, be like that, don't we? Like to our to our sons um, and to our mates, uh, related or not. That's the aim is to um, yeah, not be yeah, so yeah. reactionary and bring in that old old archaic, unhealthy way of dealing with men menness men to man to man which we need so badly men to man yeah look I, this has been a real learning curve for me yeah I, I i can't believe how much i've grown from this from where i was uh, years ago and one of the things i've seen i used to assume that the vast majority of men had it together yeah and we, we as part of our training course we do a talking circle and it's, it's just and this is on the second day and trust has developed and there's gut-wrenching stuff like i miss my dad my mum gambled away at home i don't uh, I, I can't get access to my kids and there's this incredible stuff that comes out mm. and i'm coming to the realization that most of us or all of us blokes have a perception of what a man is mm. and how a man behaves mm. and in most cases it's totally screwed up it's yep. it's a perception that's come from some film from advertising from incorrect parenting and it gets worse when we feel that we don't live up to that expectation we then feel shame and and and, and there and we're reluctant then to actually speak this stuff out so you talked about with mates and all that sort of stuff i'm not going to tell you that i'm feeling incredibly sad or or lonely or um or worse at the moment mm. um because you know, I, I, you're the guy I've known for ages. You might laugh at me or, you, you know, you're not, you know, you, and one of the things we see in mentoring, like a key sign, and I've heard this several times, uh, Ian, you know more about me than anyone, you know, my mates have known, I've, I've known for 20 years, or I've never told anyone this before, but, and then yeah, this stuff comes yeah. out and it's, it's incredibly therapeutic when someone actually can speak this knowing it's confidential, um, knowing they can trust this person and knowing the person's actively listening to them. Do you and that's, know, that's where mentor, our mentoring fits in. With your mentor, when you're dealing with these people that haven't been able to talk to their friends and we talk about friendship circles and how important the company we keep is, do you notice that they uh, potentially lose those friends? I'll call it lose, but um, because you would have to be really fragile uh, in those first moments where you're starting to reveal something about yourself, or do you notice that the friendship circles maintain and they there was it was all a perceived um, unsupportive friendship? They thought that was one of the deluded things that, that these guys thought was their mates were going to laugh at them, but they actually were like, 
buddy, I had no idea. It's it's the latter. It's just yeah. speaking this stuff out. In fact, I think in the corporate world, if more of the senior people shared their vulnerability, yes, it would change the culture of the organisation to this butt covering, anti risk taking, uh, anti risk taking thing. Yeah. And I uh, yeah, that, that and that's been my uh, my experience. The, the um, we show you the, the famous Brené Brown video. I assume, yeah. I, I assume you've seen it. The, the TED, one of the top TED TED talks on the on the power of vulnerability. And uh, it's it's a great lesson. Uh, obviously, pick your mark, pick a safe environment, but it, mm. but where you can safely share this stuff. And obviously, mentoring is a fantastic way to do that. But it could be in other contexts as well. It could be with our partner. Mm. Mm. Um, probably not not always works with your partner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, there's this catalyst for me to start mentoring men. I was struggling myself. Yes, and, right. Um, my wife has sometimes been known to say, just swallow some cement and harden up because I'm uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> I think she's at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How I want to backtrack to something. Uh, I think that'll be really valuable for just men that are listening and may listen back to this show. You mentioned something that you learned uh, on the go uh, a bit more about listening to people, but there's uh, pinpoint moments that you think, oh, there's something here that we, we need to pause on and talk about. For us, people that haven't done mentor, these programs, what, what are those things that you go, hmm, hey, po- sorry, can, do you mind if I talk a bit more about that? What are those things when you're listening to your son or to a fella that's opening up? I guess it could be you're just having a chat and, and uh, how you doing? And, and, and hmm. I might just say, oh, okay, but it's something in the body language or it's something in the... The words they 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 normally they're bright and on top of things. You detect that actually that there could be a, a potential challenge there, and 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 then you then you I, I would ask a couple more questions to see what was going on there. Mm. So it's just I guess being alert to things which suggest that the person you're talking to has it, it, it has some underlying concern or a, there's an, an emotion there, and just to to ask questions we we as well as mentor training we do uh, suicide prevention we, we strongly encourage all our mentors to do suicide prevention training as well we put hundreds through the course and there it's it's like it's the it's the mental health equivalent of physical first aid it's mm. how do you respond to that and i guess what we we're just talking about then it, it it can take the questioning further down the the line around uh, it's suicide prevention and it mm. can actually save lives through doing that as well so i guess it's just being alert to those things and then taking appropriate action um uh, it, it, yeah mm. it, I'll, I'll leave it there yeah. yeah no beautiful uh and um we talk about uh, in response to people that commit suicide very deep topic here so sorry if people are triggered and, and um, don't want their kids or something to listen to this it's okay take a moment to uh, maybe walk off, but I'm not going to get too deep about it. Um, We talk sometimes uh, unknowingly about, um, oh, I had no idea that they were even in that space. Um, You know, and I I want to micro down on, I thought you were, I've I've had a friend commit suicide back in in the 90s that I was with him the night before and having, we had a a great evening. Um, We were out at, at a bar and having a few drinks and he was a schoolmate of mine and, uh, was a successful go kart uh, uh, go kart racer, um, quiet on the quieter side, but uh, that was him. Um, and the next morning, I heard that he um, took his own life. I, what more could have I done? Uh, is what goes into your head. What more can we do in those? Um, what are some signs, or is there aside? From, there's probably situations where you just you don't know. Um, yeah, but to prod a- prod uh, yeah. effectively. Uh, to a person that is deep in in some sad sad uh, places. So look, I would, uh, as you said, if, if people aren't going to be triggered by this, I would highly recommend going out and, and doing a course and learning how to right handle that situation. Interestingly, the day that I got on the train at Asquith, the tenth of September, is World Suicide Prevention Day, wow. and I, I didn't mention before. A couple of weeks later, I met our local federal MP. Uh, uh, Julian Lisa, amazing guy, and he was uh, gave a talk at Hornsby RSL 
um, where he partnered with Lifeline on a, a suicide prevention course. And he shared this uh, inspiring, hard story about his father's suicide over 20 years ago, how every day he reflected on this. And uh, uh, Julian arranged for myself and another director to go to Canberra to meet Scott Morrison and the both sides of parliament uh, on the 10th of September anniversary. Um, and uh, so, yeah, look, there's a there's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I don't know if it's right for the for this time now to be going through that, but we we would uh, gladly support people. We run what they call a lived experience group, which helps people uh, uh, who had a, a, a experience in this area mm. uh, uh, help with that. Um, the communities who are reaching out to that the the, the refugee communities. Um, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, gender diverse communities um, have a much higher incidence. Of, yes, uh, 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 and and that's that's why one of the reasons we're so passionate about supporting these other diverse groups. So, uh, you know, yeah. our, our, one of our core values is that all men, regardless of their background or beliefs, are welcome to engage in our program. And and one hundred percent right, but we and we specifically reach out. So that that. The, the Arabic men, most of them didn't speak English. So sure. we actually had and the course with a, a translator beside them. And we went through and we're actually at the moment looking at getting uh, Arabic speaking facilitators to, to do that. And so that's it's a real passion for us. So we um, you can see my T-shirt. Here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the F2, uh, 25, two or something. Uh, 25. OK, so oops, yep. get over there. I can't work out the camera's back it's to front. Okay. Uh, um, one of our mentors has uh, had ex uh, experience around around suicide, and uh, he approached me at the start of uh, uh, this year, saying the annual suicide rate in Australia is about twenty five hundred men, and he wants to create a program to get that to zero. Hence the twenty five to zero. Ah, good one. So uh, uh, he's he's running. He's going to run two and a half thousand kilometres this year. Um, I'm I'm riding my bike. We've got a whole bunch of people on board. So if, if, if anyone's interested, they can go to the 25, uh, numeral 25, uh, T-W-O-Z-E-R-O-0.org.au and get on board. We, we'd love to see people. Just physical exercise is such a fantastic thing to yes. do for mental health. So we encourage people to get physical. Um, maybe get some sponsors on board. 100% of the money goes to mentoring men and every aspect of our program is free. So the training, wow. the support, no cost with anything. So, wow. uh, that's, so that's where we get the funding from. That's powerful. Hey, uh, you, you talk about the diverse groups that you uh, are passionate about. The, the, the Iraqi fellas, the, the, the um, people from another country, we can sometimes be a bit dismissive of what happens in other parts of the world. Did you notice just identical things going on just in men and being a little bit like far out? It's... It's crazy. Yeah. Like this is happening to men globally. Yeah. So first, I, I first met these guys in Fairfield. So after the Syrian crisis, a number of refugees came out. Most of them finished up in in, uh, in Fairfield and uh, same with Iraqi guys. So I, I went out to talk about mentoring men to these guys. And it, it, when I arrived there, these guys are setting up tables. So I started chatting to the ones who could speak English. Mm. And there was a psychiatrist, there's an engineer, there was a physicist. That These guys, the ones I spoke to, were all highly qualified. And then we arranged for an event where we walked around the Sydney Botanical Gardens and around the Opera House. In fact, there's a couple of photos in this the, the show from there. Yes. And he started chatting to these guys. And these, generally they're older, but their fathers, their grandfathers, they start showing pictures of their kids. Yeah. They're incredibly family orientated. Um, mentoring men provided food, but some of these guys bought their own food as well, traditional food, and just the generosity as they handed out. And one of the mentoring men people there bought their, their son, who was about four, and the love, they all wanted their photo taken with this guy. So <laughs> yeah, cool. other than the post-traumatic stress, like one of the guys had lost his leg in the war, so uh, <laughs> through a bomb, um, the one that was on there, he, he got the, the bullet sent, um, pushed out. under the of his shop that's probably the only difference the only difference is the, the stress that they've been through that i've been fortunate enough not to go through but in terms yes. of their family values the love for their kids 
uh, the, uh, uh, the desire to give back to the community, there's a huge untapped resource because unfortunately, Australia doesn't recognise many of the qualifications that yes. these men got. Yes. So what was their response? One guy was running, teaching English as a second class to refugees. Another guy was running citizenship classes for new refugees who come out. So these these are great guys. <laughs> you know, I'd love to have them around for dinner. Wow. Uh, yeah, so. Um, tell us a little bit about the program. Uh, you've touched on it a little bit. Tell us a little bit about the, the, the program, what men um, that may listen to this could find. We're, um, uh, sure. involved in the program how could they seek support what to expect and and maybe even if people want to be um, mentors how how they could probably put their hand up if they think they're placed that way great so the core of the program is just a, a, a professionally trained and validated volunteer male mentor mm. um, who's who's carefully matched to another bloke mm -hmm. who who could be experiencing life challenges it might be uh, job loss, us, us men place a lot of importance on the role. It could be um, uh, relationship breakdown or they're just feeling lonely or sad or, you know, they're just struggling mm. to find their purpose. So we carefully match them. They would then meet for, say, an hour once a week or once a fortnight. And exactly what you said before, Troy, it's just it's, uh, it's based on the, the focus is on the mentee and it's predominantly listening. Mm. With mentors, it's incredibly fulfilling. You know, what a great thing to actually support another bloke in life. How good is that? 100%. It's, it's awesome. And, yes. and, and for the mentee, it's all those things I talked about before. It's it's someone actually validating them. I was mentoring at a, a high school once, and I, I used to walk around this quadrangle with this young kid. And he said to me once, he said, Ian, you know I see the school counsellor. And I said, yeah. He said, I'd rather talk to you than the counsellor. That, that that surprised me because it's before you touch on it before I talk too much. I said, "Why is that?" Yeah. He said, well, the counselor sees me because that's his job. That's what he's paid to do. I know you're a volunteer. Yeah. You care about me, and this is this thing. There's no, there's no ulterior motive. There's no, like, there's no economic or financial reason behind the relationship. It's a love relationship. It's a mm. care relationship. It's a really powerful advantage that the mentor has. And um, so yeah, that's that's yeah. more of it is, is this mentoring. Um, but we also put on other things. We, we run open forums. We uh, um, found that for, uh, just getting men together to walk and talk is a huge thing as well. And we've partnered, uh, we used to run our own ones. We're now partnered with the Man Walk, which runs all around Australia. Um, yeah, so we do things like that. So we, um, if mentors are interested, just go to our website and, and uh, that you'll see on there, there's a, an application form and um, the training courses are running either via, uh, virtually or face-to-face or -face, uh, every one or two weeks. And for people who are seeking a mentor, this could be the, the, the man themselves or what we've seen in many cases, the women play such a key role in the men's lives. Yes. As long as they've got the man's agreement, a woman can put in a, a a form on behalf of the man, and we we also deal with referring agencies who do the same thing. So we've got established a number of strategic partnerships there. Well, no, uh, I, I'm I'm First Nations Indigenous, and we do a little bit of Indigenous stuff. I try and fold it into the thing. Have you have you had much experience going around your world it, it, with the mentoring thing, noticing uh, local communities and uh, the need? that there's a lot of suicide rate quite higher. You talk about these minority groups and diverse groups. Men's suicide in Indigenous communities is severely high. Uh, have you had much experience in that field? Um, or or getting, you noticing the need? We, we're getting there. So um, we uh, have a contract with one of the Southwest, with the Southwest of Sydney Primary Health Network. Mm. And, uh, and they've seen that mentoring is a proactive way of reducing male suicide. So in conjunction with us, there's uh, uh, four other partners and one of them is an Indigenous partnership. Right. So, um, so we're making, it's it's a harder thing. I, I And I get this. Mm. It, I, I, I was at a talk uh, about two weeks ago and we still have a long way to go for reconciliation. And mm. it's a real passion of mine. And I've spoken to Julian about this. Uh, so Julian is uh, involved in constitutional reform uh, on behalf mm. of the government. And there's, there's, there's challenges around that. So 
I, I, I'm now talking as Ian, not as mentoring man, but I, the injustice there around the constitution, even around the national anthem, I, I think it's, 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 it's disgraceful that we allow this to go on. So I, so I get emotional about this. And you're tri- <laughs> Shit, but, uh, um, but we, we are working with some indigenous people there, but we have a long way to go and um, we've got to build that, that, that trust. Um, mm. And it's a, it's a real passion uh, for me as passion for a number of other people in the team. So and, uh, we are working closely with one indigenous leader who represents another uh, organization. He's just been unbelievable. So, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. I love how you said there, and um, we talk about reconciliation and uh, First Nations issues quite often, naturally being, uh, well, I get to curate the show whoever I want. But no, it's a, it's a, we're, we're in Australia, so it's it seems obvious. But um, but no, you said building trust. Um, that sometimes can be glazed over. Uh, in the uh, We can get a little bit fixy-fixy or listen, listen, or well, hang on, just maybe build... Building trust is something that I haven't heard for a long time in these conversations. That's really nice that you yeah. point that out. We recommend our mentoring relationships go for at least six months. Yes. And in some relationships, with, particularly with people who have had a really difficult situation, there could have been abuse in the past. There could be Sometimes it can take a while for that trust mm. to, to develop. In other cases, I find... Um, um, you know, people respond very quickly. But uh, so we, we've got mentoring relationships that started when mentoring men started and they're, they're still going. So it's been just two and a half years now. Got to really hang in there, hey. I, I think often enough, I've even been kind of, you know, to my mates or to someone at the pub or someone at basketball that I'm talking to and I can see they've got problems. I can, you can ask and they, quite obviously, they, they and explainable, they shrug you off, go, ah, well, good. You can see something's up. So you leave it. And I heard earlier today, uh, this week, doing some research on on some of the issues around it. We can, uh, we've got to keep at it and keep checking in, um, maybe you know, delicately and sensitively. But to to call it a day off the first interactions, not what's good. Exactly. It, you, it could be the tenth time that they, like, it sounds like you're wearing them down. But the alternative uh-huh. is high by they they're still isolated and you're off. Going, oh, well, I tried, which is probably not what you teach in the mentoring thing and something that us men could do uh, a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. And what you just said then, I, I'm, at one stage I was invited to go to the Penrith Walk and Talk, which is, they, they, at that point, that about 160 guys would walk around the Peen River. And I gave a quick talk about mentoring men and then we walked and some guys came alongside me uh, during the, the five kilometer walk and mm. shared some incredibly tough stuff. And later I said to one of the organization, uh, uh, one of the leaders, what do you do? And he said, we've got no idea. Like the typical Aussie response, oh, you'll be all right, mate. Or go yeah. and have another beer. That would be okay. And it's, yeah. this is what I say about, I guess, training to know how to respond to those situations. In some ways it's a, like a, it's a cry for help. But our response is it's really uncomfortable for us yeah. or we don't know what to say or whatever. That's, you know, I encourage people to explore uh, ex- explore how to better handle that situation and be there for that person. It could save a life. Give us some, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Give us some, give us some things to say if someone's, so you know what, I'm not, I'm not actually well. Um, and they talk about something that maybe you haven't experienced at all. And, right. and, and, and you don't want to say... <laughs> I don't know what to say here, mate. I don't know what to say. I'm just here for you. What's some ways you can, what's some real things that you could potentially say or do? Well, okay. Well, firstly, I think it's, uh, to me, it's always been honest. And if I don't know what to say, like, like I, I haven't experienced many of the things that people share with me that they've experienced. Of course. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I can't, I can't help them, but I could, I could ask them, um, to tell me a bit more about that experience, mm. and uh, um, um, I, I could ask them, uh, you know, how, they, how they're coping with it, you know, how you know, um, mm. how you're going out of ten, you know, with that, or you know, uh, uh, are you getting any support or whatever? It's, yeah, I'm not the world's best mentor, but it, it, but um, I actually won an award through the Rays Foundation as Volunteer of the Year, and and I was interviewed, and they said, well, what does it take to be a mentor? And I said, well, two things. Do you care? Mm. And can you listen? That's it. Amen. So um, 
often in in the mentor engagements I had, I worked out the smartest things to say in the car on the way home after after the interaction. Yeah. <laughs> like, <damn. laughs> just being there, just yeah. being there shows that you, you care. And, and uh, yeah, so um, I think a lot of men think they've got to have this extensive experience. They've got to have all these qualifications. And you've been through a bit of life experience, you know, it's, yeah, it's said, it. if you care and you can listen, and you, you, know, you you can do it. You don't you don't need to be look at me. You don't need to be that smart. <laughs> I think you downplay yourself. You're incredible, man. Ian. I'm, I'm so blessed that you um, made this time at such short notice to get on here and and uh, and speak your words within such an important week. It's one of those themes that could be revisited at any old time of the of the um, of the year. And um, I appreciate you coming on today, Ian, and and sharing a lot about mentoring men. But certainly, personally, uh, I need to listen. I need to listen more instead of fixing. It's yeah. it's a thing. It's a real thing with men. It is. Troy, look, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, if anyone wants to find out more information, our website is mentoringmen.org.au. I, I love the show. I love the concept. Oh, cool. and, uh, <laughs> Thanks for jumping in without having any idea. It's, it's always interesting, I'll be honest, about talking about this radio show that's only got a few listeners. It's a video thing. It's got no affiliation with anything. It could really be something uh, uh, not that you want to be a part of, but I appreciate you jumping in, and thanks for the encouraging words. Uh, I put up the link as well, Ian, for you, mentoringmen.org.au. And I love that 25 to zero. I love mark, good marketing. 25 to zero because there's 25,000. Did you say 25,000 men suicides a year? Going up at the moment, but yeah, over 25, uh, sorry, 2,500. Sorry, 2,500, yes. More than the, the annual road toll, two and a half thousand men uh, suicide each year. An awful stat. Wow. Ian, um, go enjoy uh, your lovely grandkids. Uh, I, I was lucky enough to see them before the show went to air, but, mate, it's a pleasure having you, and we look forward to hearing from you again, mate. Okay. Thank, thanks, Troy. Thanks very much.